Hi everybody, Tom Waters here from Creative Waters Art and today I'm going to be showing you, walking you through and talking you through how I created this pair of paintings here, chickadees. I set out, uh, I had two sketches put together and I was trying to decide which one to do so I decided I would just go ahead and paint them both. That way, while I had the colors out and I had the paints out, I could just go from one to the other. So throughout these videos that I'm going to break into parts, um, you'll see me at times switching from one to the other. Uh, so I'll do the backgrounds, then I'll do the block in, then I'll do the birds, then I'll do the branches, um, and I'll go from one painting to the other. So thanks for joining me, and I hope you learned something. Okay, so to put this together, the first thing I do is I take my reference photos in Photoshop and I compose my painting. I could just do a drawing, but since I'm using photo references, this is how I like to start. For the colors that I'm using, I'm using mostly golden, artist quality, acrylic heavy body paints. There is a whole bean, or whole bean acrylic paint in there as well. And I'm using titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, just a little bit of thalo blue, Payne's gray, and cadmium red light. Also not shown here is I do use some burnt umber, and I think that's it for my colors. For my brushes, I do use a palette knife to mix my colors before putting them down. Just a plain palette knife. I have a small liner brush and a small detail brush. The liner brush isn't shown here, that's the detail brush. This is just a very small round brush. And then I have this small angular brush. It uh, has sort of a chisel, chis, chisel shape to it. And then a very small flat that has a nice sharp edge. And then a small, very soft flat for doing some blending. I do use a blender brush and a one inch background brush. The brush that's missing from the photo here also is a one inch flat. And those are the brushes that I use. I'm painting on a Raymar smooth cotton panel. It's a 9 by 12 panel. And I chose the smooth cotton because of the level of detail that I wanted to get in, in these. If I was going for something with a little bit less detail, it'd be fine to use a heavier textured panel. But the more detail that you want to get, it, it's just easier to do on a smooth panel. Okay, so you can see that I transfer my photo reference that I put together in Photoshop onto the panel using a grid method. And um, I do use a grid method when I want to make sure that I get the proportions right and I get the placement right. Um, and because I'm using acrylics, I don't worry as much about the pencil lines because they cover really well. Um, and I've started the background. Now, um, for the background, all I'm trying to do here is just get rid of the white. So I'm just going to start by covering everything with some paint. And when I do this for the background, that first initial layer of color, um, what I'm using here is I'm actually using my gesso with some cobalt blue and a little bit of Payne's gray. And one of the reasons is that I know that this is almost all of this is going to, or all of this is going to get covered up. I'm just sort of getting started here on getting some color in the background. And instead of using titanium white, the white gesso is just a lot more affordable. Um, and by keeping it wet and loose, I can put it over the whole panel and still have my drawing show through. So once I get the gesso, the colored, the tinted gesso down, um, I'm just going in with my one inch brush and I'm dabbing on some white and then I'm dabbing on a mixture again of cobalt blue and Payne's gray and white and while that's still wet, I'm working fairly fast here. This is sped up a little bit, but you can I'm still working while this stays wet. I'm just going in with a blender brush and just softening out what I'm putting on. So I'm going to do this in layers for the background, and what I'm trying to do is just sort of get a little bit of a mottled, diffused background with whites and blues and grays. After that first application, I go back and add a little bit of thalo blue into my mix only to give it a little bit more pop. Just thalo blue is so strong you can only you only want to use a little bit. But it gives it a, a little bit of a cooler feel and gives it a little bit more color. So you see I'm going in and again I'm using that one inch background brush and I'm applying a little bit of that color and then I'm 
using that brush to sort of soften it out is a soft flat that I'm interchanging with the background brush to soften that out as I put that color in. And again, I'm going to keep going over this and covering it up as I go along. So I'm not worried too much about getting the entire background so that it's opaque. That'll come later. So now I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to be applying more paint. I want to make sure I don't lose my drawing. So I'm going in with my thin liner brush and a little bit of, uh, I mixed up a little bit of brown paint here using some uh, some white and some red and a little bit of blue and yellow, just you know, creating a, a soft brown color. You could use gray, you could use whatever you'd like. And I'm just re-emphasizing my drawing so that I don't lose it as I continue to apply layers of paint. And again, I'm not trying to get everything, all the details or anything. I just want to make sure I, I have a, can keep a sense of where the major elements are going to go and make sure that I've got my birds proportioned and positioned where I want them. This is also the opportunity when you put this down where you can step back after you get it down on the canvas and just stand back and reevaluate your drawing and make sure that you've got what it is you want as far as composition, here's the best place to make adjustments here. If I wanted to move a bird or add a branch or adjust something, this would be the time to do it. And now I'm sort of uh, starting to put in the next layer on top of that background. And again, I just want to get the I want to get the feeling of some branches in the distance that are sort of blurred out. So I'm taking some really loose paint that's watered down. I'm applying it with a soft flat brush, sort of just getting some shapes that suggest some branches and then I'm sort of blending those out so that the, when I'm done it'll look like there's you know some branches in the background that are out of focus. So that's the first step. And now comes the real blocking. So for this step what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take the darkest shadow color on these birds that I think I'm going to need and block in with those deeper colors first. And the reason, you know, while these certainly don't look like the chickadees that will result, the reason these colors are so much darker and stronger is that I want to do two things. First, it's a lot easier in layering to work from dark to light and to layer on top of the darks. It's it's harder to go from light to bring the darks back in. So I like to start with the darker colors and use the colors that will peek through because there will be places where these colors in the end will peek through as I add layers. Um, and so that's sort of the shadow color underneath the feathers in some of these places or underneath the breast that will still come through those final layers. So while it's a little unnatural to paint these birds so brown and yellow and bright, I know that as I continue to layer on top, a lot of this color is going to disappear. But because of the translucency and the paints that go on top, some of that color is going to affect the color that sits on top. So I want it to be the sort of browns and reds that you're going, I mean browns and yellows that you're going to see in the feathers in the final result. And then the blacks, you know, here I'm not worried about coverage. All of this will get more than one layer. And so I'm just taking um, what I've done is I've taken my Payne's gray and a little bit of cobalt blue and just a touch of raw umber and created a nice dark here. Payne's gray, if you don't have it, um, I, I don't use a pure black. I mix a black and Payne's gray is a very dark blue gray. And so it's, it's sort of a nice gray, uh, a nice shortcut to a dark that isn't pure black. So by adding a little bit of blue and adding a little bit of raw umber, I can get a nice dark color. So again, this is just the blocking phase. So all I'm trying to do is get rid of some of that white or the lighter part of the canvas and establish where my darks are, establish some of the underlying shadow colors that are going to peek through, and then establish, you'll see in a minute, I'll be establishing where my lights are. You're going to see during the course of these videos that I do a lot of layering. So you're gonna these birds will have easily you know five or six or seven layers 
on them, especially on the breast before they're finished. So again, I'm going in here and saying, well, I'm, you know, after that first pass, I realized that in those shadow areas, I'm going to need some more darks, not just the browns. And so that was what I was applying there. Here I am doing the same thing on the second panel. So again, I'm just blocking in the birds and I want to get some of that color that's going to peek through later underneath here on the breasts. And just applying that with, um, what brush am I using to apply this with? I, I might actually be using a filbert brush here that I didn't show. So I apologize for that. But you could apply it with a, the flat or with it, whatever brush. It's easy to just sort of block in. And then, you know, the back of that bird is going to be darker. So I'm applying some grays. Now, in this case, on the back of that bird, uh, there's going to be some darker blacks. Uh, but but I'm trying to find, so if that's more of the middle color on the back of that bird that might show through, I'll apply some lights and some darks on top of that later when I do the detail. And then going in and darkening down again those browns because I want the shadow color underneath the feathers to be a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. And then there's the block in of some of the blacks coming up next. can adjust all these shapes as I move along. I'm mostly just sort of making sure that I get the major area locked in with the value. So I want my darks and my lights. Uh, my lights being that I'm again blocking in with what I think will be the shadow color underneath those light area, areas. There's, um, so a lot of this video, as you can see here, is at about four times speed, normal speed. There's going to be times where I will show you some of what I'm painting in real time. But to do the whole thing in real time would be uh, probably five or six hours of video that I took. And nobody wants to sit through that. So um, hopefully you can grasp what I'm doing here without going too fast, without it flying by, and with enough explanation that you can follow along. So you could, if you were trying to paint this, you could certainly um, play a portion, uh, paint to it, you know, stop it, and then play another portion, stop, and move on. So you can see, as I did with the first panel, I got sort of those darker colors, that colors down, and then, you know, working in some of those lighter colors. So I'm already on the third layer of paint and I'm just blocking in here. That's one of the great things about acrylics is that it dries so fast that you can just keep going back and layering and layering and adjusting um, but in this case, it's not so much making adjustments because I don't like what's there. It's starting with one color that I want to influence the colors that come on top and then just building up those layers. And here I am getting the lighter areas of the cheeks. So the lighter areas here on the cheeks uh, for the block in is uh, titanium white and a little bit of yellow ochre. It might be at just a touch of Payne's gray in there to gray it out a little bit, but um, while it looks, especially on the left one, it looks fairly white. It's it's not um, it's not white at all. It's actually you know uh, quite a bit of ways from white. The the strongest lights will come in last. So I'm I'm sort of establishing now where you know on the back before you, between the wings you get sort of a lighter gray color. Um, and I'm just making some adjustments as I go to sort of make sure that I've got the canvas covered with color that will represent the birds as they're, as I, you know, that the underlying color that I will then put the details on top. The next step is to just block in the branches. And here, uh, here's where I'm using some burnt umber and a little bit of white and maybe just a touch of of my cadmium red and 
and these are all going to be going over, gone over later. It's going to be adding layers to everything you see here. So it's just establishing that initial branch structure for these. I do add some branches that later I don't like the placement for and I take them out, but we'll talk about that when that happens. Um, and that's, you know, again, you can make adjustments. You don't have to get it perfect. And that's part one. Part two will be details, the longer part of painting the actual chickadees. Thanks for watching, and I hope you watch part two.